the Arab land is about twice the size of the United States. And the land of Israel is smaller than the state of New Jersey. And yet, listen to this, but Arabs want Israel to give up land. You see how stupid this sounds? Let me think, I want you to think about this for a second. There are 22 Arab countries and there's only one Jewish nation. The Arabs occupy 5 million square miles of land. And the Jews have about 8,000 square miles. To give you an idea what that is, that represents one-tenth of one percent of land mass. That's what Israel represents. Yet to the Arabs, that's still too much. The fact of the matter is they want it all. And this is what all the fighting in the Middle East is about. This is why we're paying close to $4 a gallon right now. It all has to do with that, and that's not a coincidence. It's not an accident that it's happening this way. And it's all about whether or not Israel has the right to exist. Now, folks, you got to listen to what I'm saying. This is very important. No matter how many land concessions the Israelis make, it will never be enough for the Arabs. It's not really about land, folks. It's about God. And what you don't, you and I have, a, have to constantly be reminding ourselves, all this issue is about a struggle that goes further than just a piece of dirt, rocky dirt, out in the middle of nowhere. What this is all about is about God and his statement to a man called Abraham. See, God made a covenant, a covenant, a promise that he said will come to pass. That covenant promise included lots of promises and the, the, the whole world would be blessed by them. But what we're seeing is really an all-out attack on the reliability of God's promises. Because let me tell you something, if Satan can prove that God is a liar now, well, then all his, all, his, all his promises are invalidated. I want you to think about this. Satan wants to make God a liar. And that's why he's doing everything in his power to destroy Israel. Do you know that nine times in the scripture, God introduces himself with this phrase. I am the God, now listen to this statement, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Notice that He's called the God of Israel 203 times. And it's to Israel that God gave this promised land. Now listen to this. God is never called the God of Ishmael, which, by the way, is the descendants from which the Arabs have come. He's never called the God of the Arabs. And it's, it's erroneous beyond belief to say that Allah is the same God that we serve. That is a lie from hell. He's never called the God of the Americans. He's never called the God of the French or the God of the Russians or anyone else. He is called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And gratefully, us Gentiles got grafted in to this through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, that's a whole other message in and of itself. But let me share something with you for just a minute. We'll take a little side trip for a moment. In Genesis 12, here's a promise that God gave to Abraham. Now, listen to this. It's going to be very important. Chapter 12, verse 1. I will bless them that bless thee. He's given this promise. And you read verse 1 to 3. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And we can prove that, but that's a, a whole nother message in and of itself. But I want you to look at the phrase, I will bless them that bless thee, I will curse him that curses thee. The phrase curse literally means divine judgment. Get your strong concordance out if you if you'd, uh, uh, have a, or a Hebrew study, uh, word study, and look this out. He said he'd bring a curse. A divine judgment. Now, let me share something with you. On August 25th, just a few days ago, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice once again went to Jerusalem for a two-day visit to discuss a Palestinian state and the dividing of Jerusalem. And most of you know 
that they are doing everything they can to get this accomplished because one of, 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 um, of George Bush's focuses as a president, he said he wanted to have a two-party, a two-state uh, situation in Israel. He wanted a Palestinian-Israeli state. And he has done everything in his power to divide Israel, to divide Jerusalem. And every single time, God judges us for doing that. I'll give you an example, and we'll go into great detail about this tonight. The very same day, and by the way, every single time, every single time without fail, within 24 hours of the United States making and forcing or trying to force the hand of Israel to give away land, the promised land, every single time catastrophe follows the United States. Every, and I'll document this uh, in great detail tonight. The very same day that Condoleezza Rice was over there for that two-day visit, tropical depression number seven develops in, the, in Central Caribbean area, which now we know is Hurricane Gustav, which, by the way, is most likely going to hit uh, America here within the next 24 hours. Areas from Texas to Alabama are on the watch, which, by the way, this is where Condoleezza Rice is from, Alabama. Uh, major hurricane warnings from Texas to Alabama. Once again, New Orleans is considered ground zero at this point. And I just saw a moment ago, went back into the office and, and, and just downloaded this uh, image. This just came off of AP. New Orleans are now leaving the city under a mandatory evacuation order. And the hurricane center has now issued warnings that co coastal areas from far western Louisiana to Alabama, Florida border, meaning that the hurricane conditions are expected in that area in the next 24 hours. Now, I will tell you something. Your pastor just mentioned the verse before he introduced me, but in Zechariah 2.8, God told how sensitive he is about this issue. You all know that your eye is a very sensitive thing. So to tell you how sensitive God is, he calls Israel the apple of his eye. And if you touch it, you are touching a very sensitive part to the Lord God. Now, we'll cover some more about this later on, but let me give you some and get back on track with our thrust in this message this morning. I want to give you for the next few minutes example after example of undeniable prophecies. Jeremiah, for example, gave this. This is again about 600 B.C. In chapter 31, verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles far off. By the way, that's at, if at best, that's one of the only few passages you can find that refers to America as an isle far off. Far off from where? Far off from Israel, because it's all about Israel. Declare this to all the nations, God says. Declare it to the isles far off and say, he that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. Has that happened, folks? Has the God who made this promise scattered them? Well, yes, and he said he was going to gather them. Let me just show you something. Here in Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 13. It says these words about the gathering together again of Israel. I will bring them out from the people. I will gather them from the countries and bring them to their own what? Land. Feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers, which is the Gaza Strip, by the way, and in the, all the inhabited places of the country. Now, folks, let me tell you something. Right before our very eyes, we're seeing this take place. Literally, you're never going to hear this on the news. You will not hear what is happening before our very eyes ever on secular television because it intimidates them because it proves that they're wrong and God is right. 
When you read statements like this in Ezekiel eleven seventeen, it says, Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the, what does it say there? Land of Israel. 